Morning, folks. Beautiful day here. Early. It's an early day. Our first day without puppies. It's also a chilly morning, which is pretty awesome. I got a Longhorn Luster's cap. I'm going to walk out and hand to the pond guy, one of the fellows who's been here every single day, just working and working. And uh, I'm going to also talk to him about the issues, the concerns that I have with the pond. So you guys come with me. I'm not going to video the actual conversation and put him on the spot. But uh, this is Charlie. Charlie, the uh, same guy who was here the morning that we had Charlene being born, which is why we named her Charlene. So I'm going to run. I'm going to talk to him a little bit about my concerns and then we'll, we'll get back with you. In case you didn't watch yesterday's video, you know that my concern was that they're about to start topping this thing off with rock. They got all the clay brought in and they've got it all shaped up nice. And today they're going to start topping it with the rock, but I don't think it's tall enough. And so we're going to figure out what they say. They uh, taking a bath in front of you. You know that, right? That's their way of dusting off and cleaning themselves up a little bit. Are these here harassing you at all? <laughs> this is for you, brother. Hey, I'm going to holler at you about something real fast and get your ideas on something. He's going to become my new male, uh, Carl. You know, Carl's the mean one over in the other pasture. And he, uh, he's taken right after him. Now, he's still too young now to be too mean, but I'm afraid what's going to happen in the next couple of years, he's going to be trouble. I'm sitting here talking to Paul and Charlie, and uh, Paul will just explain something to me. Paul, what did you just say? That was really powerful. Yeah, so this, this pond is probably the most interesting pond that we've seen in a long time because uh -huh. you have so many different aspects of the pond. You have this pond bank that has a different elevation, a different slope, a different approach to your, your pond bank. You have it's this. like steep. That's like a really yeah. steep, you're right. Exactly. And then you have this one, which is a nice gradual slope and you'll get really nice water flow off of it. So you got to take all that into consideration uh -huh. when deciding how to attack this pond and help uh, mitigate the erosion aspect. So that's that. what I asked, is this the most challenging job you've ever done? And he's like, well, it has its challenges. And he talked about the topography and how everything is so different. So every side of the pond creates a whole new issue. And you haven't dealt with that before, huh? Not, not, not in this <laughs> caliber because you don't traditionally see such rolling hills here. Right, yeah. Well, that's neat. That's neat. Well, I learned a lot right there. I want to talk to you about a couple of things that Paul explained to me. And I'm glad I talked to Paul. Uh, Charlie, sort of, uh, he was here before Paul. And he kind of explained to me something. And I want to show it to you all. Um, let me turn my camera around. It would be a lot easier. You see these trees here? Believe it or not, these are the problem. This is, these are the biggest problems. Yes, the topography, the, the, the incline, the drop, the angle, you know, all that is an issue. But these trees are an issue as well because the problem is you can't let the water get as high as what we would like it to be on that end and on this end without affecting the root systems of these trees. Now, what you do is, he says, you look at how far out the limbs come because that is exactly what determines how far your roots go out. So if in fact our limbs of our tree come out to where I'm standing and I'm looking straight up right about now, watch this. So now you can see that the water is only able to come up a few more feet before it begins to affect this. And then he said that the problem is, is that your trees will end up sucking all of the water out of your pond. And I'm like, come on. I said, how's that tree gonna suck water out of your pond? And if you don't have a very thick layer of clay or some kind of a liner, then any water standing through here will suck right down into the roots of your tree systems. So it's a whole lot more complicated than what sometimes we make it out to be. And then Paul talked about over here, this is a very nice, easy, smooth spot to work. If you were doing a pond here, it'd be one thing. And so you have to have a, an angle of attack for this size of the, this side of the pond 
But once you get over there, everything changes and it all gets very different. I know the sun glare is too much where you can even see. And so the last thing that I addressed was the fact that if we don't go high enough on that far bank and that water starts running down, it's going to create more of those gully washers, those big ravines that we don't want that could end up tripping our animals up. And so what Paul's going to do to address that, I'll try to turn my camera back around here. All right, so the last thing that Paul's going to do is once they mark, and they're marking now how high the water's going to rise, they're actually marking the water line, which is pretty neat. Once they finish marking that water line, and they're going to come over on this side where we have the most erosion, and they're going to bring in, he said, bull rock, or I think you may call it riprap. They're going to dig down so deep and put that riprap along the ground. Uh, there'll still be some riprap sticking out of the top where you that will be able to see it. Grass will finally grow up through it, which would be nice. Uh, if you're concerned about the cows not being able to walk down through there and drinking because of the riprap, you're right. But there's no need for riprap on this side. Uh, we do not have the erosion over here that we do over on this side over here. And so that will still give our cows a place to come down and get them a drink of water. But it will protect us from having all of those huge washouts, those, you know, all those ravines that the uh, rushing water can cause. And I don't know exactly where Paul wants to start that riprap, but I'm guessing right about over here because we know what a gully washer that can be. And it will probably go all the way around, all the way to the far end where we have the spillway. But uh, it was nice talking to Paul. They're putting the water line right now. I can show you with the orange paint. He's marking right there how high the water is going to come up. And so that's going to be neat to know. So what he's using over here, this tool he's holding, matches up to his laser, which is over there. And so all we can do is wait. I mean... They look like they know what they're doing. <laughs> they look like they know what they're doing. And so I'll be excited to wait and see what it looks like once we get our first big heavy rain. Not too heavy. We don't want to have all of our soil washed back into our pond. But, you know, Charlie was also explaining that it's harder. You know, we talk all the time about the, uh, the supply, the chain, supply chain, the supply chain. And Charlie was saying that it's harder to get rock these days. Uh, the fuel costs are so expensive for trucking that a lot of trucking companies are going out of business. And that means you just can't call your local trucking company and say, hey, I need 10 loads of rock because those guys are not operating. And then even the factories and the plants that are open up that, you know, they, they do all the gravel. They will not even open up if they can't get at least 60 or more loads out in a day. So if they don't have enough demand for 60 or more loads, they're just going to shut down for the day. It's not worth their time or money having employees come in. And then to compound things, trucking companies can't find drivers. Drivers don't want to work. And so it all goes back to all that stuff we've been talking about with everything else. Supply and demand, supply chain. Uh, the workforce there's a lot of factors that you know i never thought about in my other other videos that are affecting uh how they get their jobs done so we're blessed to have these guys they're working hard and uh now that i've, I've talked to paul i have a whole lot better understanding of what the plan is and they're doing all that stuff over here now so that'll be good so right right so right here in this area where we had that really bad erosion right we fixed this up right i see yeah that's all i've been yeah and then, so at the toe of the pond bank that's where we'll put the rip rack. you call the toe of the pond bank what do you mean the toe so you got your you got your flat area right yeah as soon as it starts to to crest oh okay okay that's where your toe is oh you okay call it the toe yep okay exactly. got it yep and that'll be about three four foot of rip wrap yep exactly and that'll be enough to perfect the water will hit it slow down and then it will trickle down the pond bank and ultimately once your water level's higher yeah you're gonna it's gonna slow all oh up. yeah the water will have nowhere to run to it'll yep. go to the water yep exactly. perfect all right well thank you paul thanks yep. for explaining stuff thank you too charlie yep, absolutely i learned a lot today while we're talking about rocks let's give a give a quick rundown 
of what's going on here around the pond. It's called bull rock. You may know it as rip rap. I want you to look at that orange line. Can y'all see the orange paint right there at the base, the bottom of that rip wrap? We're gonna walk over there. There's some more right here. This is, I am gonna say it. I don't know if it's true, but this is supposedly gonna be the water line. This is the water line, okay? That's where they say the water's gonna come up to before it begins to go over the spillway. Now they took that fancy measuring device, that laser, and they walked around this thing and that fellow marked with orange paint. Then they came by and they put this four foot stretch of rip wrap so that any water that comes pouring off, off these hills is going to be slowed down enough by the rip wrap that when it filters through the rip wrap, kind of like a French drain, it won't come with any force. And so we'll be able to keep our, our edge of the pond without having all of the um, ravines and stuff cut into it. You know what I'm talking about, like we had last time. And so that's what's going on over here. Now you're going to say, but Lester, your cows are going to have a hard time getting down to the water because they don't want to walk over that rock. And you're right, but we're not putting any rock on that side. There'll be no rock anywhere on that side because of the fact that we never had any erosion over there. For the entire, look at the cats. They've all followed me out. Because of all, we've had an entire year. The pond's been here an entire year. And don't forget, we had a couple of months of some really heavy rain. And there was, we, we were able to get a good idea of what happens, the dynamic of flooding here and water runoff. And through all of that, this side of the pond was just destroyed with water coming off this hill. But we had no problems over here whatsoever. I mean, you might see just minor, minor, uh, spots in the dirt there and so they are going to continue with this rip wrap a four foot stretch all the way around you still see the orange line that they painted based on their measurements and the water will come all the way to there and where i'm walking here will be that that heavy bull rock and so guys we hope that this will do the trick i mean we hope it'll do the trick. And then they have several loads they had dumped. They didn't have time to spread today. And then right over here, you can see the orange line. They'll put heavy rock across the top of this over here. And then this is a spot over here, this little indention where all the water, that this is where they're gonna really pack it in tight and heavy this is where we're gonna have a lot of rock here because this is a spot that the water will begin to overflow when it does reach a certain depth it'll come right across here and go right on over and uh, paul says uh, they'll put enough rock that they can maintain the integrity of you might say the dam the he'll put enough solid rock where there'll be no fear of our um spillway washing out and so it's, it's it's being done right this time guys it's being done right i've had some questions we've talked about it a little bit i've had a lot of concerns but i've addressed those with paul we've talked daily and i really do feel like this is gonna work out right for us guys i gotta let you go it's been a long video but i still have all these animals over here to feed you see dixie's getting beverly you're upset with me all the ghosts are staring me down and uh i'm losing my daylight i want to thank y'all for watching hey you know what time it is right don't let your troubles fester come watch longhorn lester <laughs> yeah something like that